Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Ipshita Chanda and I teach comparative literature at the English and Foreign Languages University in Hyderabad. This paper is called New Literatures in English and the module is on writings on partition and film adaptations of those writings. This module focuses on a new area of study that broadly falls under the category of literature and film. More specifically, it is about the adaptation of partition literary writings into films. In this module, you will be briefly introduced to the genre of parti partition writing and films on partition, which are adapted from partition fiction. Later, we will analyze two selected literary texts that are adapted into films and consider, through these examples, the theory of adaptation from fiction into film. A brief introduction of partition. Partition in general means a division of land based on geographical and political boundaries. These boundaries are created citing various socio-political reasons. India faced partition at independence in 1947. The fate of India was changed by the political decision to partition India into two countries along religious lines. The partition did not cease with the birth of the new country Pakistan. In 1971, the subcontinent was partitioned again. Pakistan split into two and Bangladesh was born out of what was formerly East Pakistan. A detailed history of this violent event is found in the module on partition literatures in this course. Here we will consider first the films on partition of India. Sociopolitical history is sealed in art, literature and films. There are various literary writings based on the horrible incidents that occurred during India's partition. Not all, but some of these issues of partition are presented through literature. However, literature is not the only medium that depicts the displacements and killings of this unforgettable time. Films also portray these events. We will consider the theoretical aspects of the transfer of literature into film in the last part of this module. Let us first review some of the films made on partition. Chinnamul, a 1950 Bengali film, was the first Indian film on the partition of India. It was directed by Nimai Ghosh. This film does not follow any conventional mode of filmmaking as its main intention was to highlight the agony, the dilemmas, the tensions and fears of the people caught in the undercurrents of displacement. To make this realistic film, Nimai Ghosh, the director, says that he followed six different principles and I quote him, no professional actors, no makeup, except whiskers, no outtakes, no songs, concealed camera on all occasions and dialogue with a strongly regional dialect. Similarly, there are many movies made on the themes and issues of partition of the subcontinent in various languages in both India and Pakistan. In the next slide, you will find the names of almost all the movies that were made in India and some of the movies made in Pakistan too like Kartar Singh and Khamosh Pani. Kartar Singh was the first movie made on this issue. The Pakistani writer Bapsi Sidwa's Cracking India was made as Earth 1947 by Deepa Mehta, an expatriate in Indian director with Indian actors like Nandita Das, Rahul Khanna and Amir Khan in the lead roles. This module does not focus on any particular country's literary or cinematic representation of partition. The major focus of the module is the process of cinematic ad adaptation with extensive examples from the film adaptations of partition literature. 
Dharmaputra, made in 1961, is considered as the first Hindi movie made on the partition. Later, some more poignant films like Garam Hawa, Tamas, Train to Pakistan and Earth 1947 were made in Hindi. Various literary works on partition have been written from the very beginning of India's independent life. In some of them, the theme of partition runs in the background, like in R.K. Narayan's Waiting for the Mahatma, written in 1955. A plethora of novels were written in different Indian languages in both India and Pakistan. Kushwan Singh's Train to Pakistan was written in English but filmed later on. Rajan's Dark Dancer, Mulgaonkar's Distant Drum, Atiya Hussain's Sunlight on a Broken Column, Chaman Nahal's Azadi, H.S. Gill's Ashes and Petals, and The Night of the Seven Dawns by Anita Kumar, Clear Light of Day by Anita Desai, Salman Rushdie's metafictional novel Midnight's Children, K.A. Abbas's autobiographical The World is My Village, Mahmood Sipra's Pawn to King Three, N.N. Saxena's Ties Thick and Thin, Manoj Das's Cyclones, and Babsi Sidwa's Cracking India are some of these novels written in different languages on the partition of India. Films made on partition writings. As we have seen, there are a number of literary writings detailing the historical moment of partition in Indian history. For example, Pinjar is a novel by Amrita Pritham, the renowned Punjabi writer. A film was made of this novel in Hindi with the same title and directed by Chandra Prakash Vivedi. It is about a Hindu-Muslim conflict, the abduction of women and the fate of these abducted women after partition. Dharmaputra is a Hindi novel written by Acharya Chatursen Shastri. The film based on this novel deals with Hindu-Muslim issues but there is a love story at the centre. Train to Pakistan written by Kushwan Singh was made later into a film directed by Pamela Rooks. The film crosses the socio-political dimensions of partition and highlights the abuse of humanity which, which remains human despite the abuse in the wake of partition. Tamas is a Hindi novel written by Bhisham Sahani based on the partition of India. It was first made into a television series and later into a movie by Govind Nihalni. As a television series, it was first telecast on Doordarshan. Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie touches the themes and issues of partition. This film was also directed by Deepa Mehta, who also made Earth 1947 out of Babsi Sidwa's Cracking India. Films like Tamas, Pinjar, Earth 1947 and Garm Hawa gathered much attention and were widely appreciated both as literature and as film. However, Midnight's Children as fiction won the Man Booker Prize but as a film could not hold the attention of the audiences. Train to Pakistan as a novel is very well known but as a film it was not noticed by the audiences. This raises the question what is the process of adaptation and how and why does the focus shift from the literary medium to the audiovisual or the cinematic medium and what are the results of this shift? In the next part of the module, these are the questions we will consider. We have selected two novels which have been adapted into films and we discuss these novels and their adaptations in some detail. The two novels are Train to Pakistan by Kushwan Singh and Cracking India 
also known as Ice Candy Man by Babsi Sidwa. The film made out of the, this novel by Deepa Mehta was called 1947 Earth. We will first discuss the literary writing and then the adaptation of the novels into film. The novel Train to Pakistan opens with the peaceful life of the village Manu Majra. The village comes to life with the arrival and departure of trains. The only sound we hear which informs the villagers about the beginning, the middle and the end of the day is the sound of trains passing through the village. The novel was first published as Manu Majra in 1956 by Groves Publishers and later it was published as Chateau and Windus. In the Chateau and Windus edition, the name of the novel was changed to Train to Pakistan. The decision to publish it initially as Mano Majra suggests that the novel centers on the life of that village. The second title of the novel, Train to Pakistan, vocalizes the partition. Nevertheless, in both cases, the protagonist of the novel is not a human character or not a single human character, but the village Mano Majra that bears the insanity of partition. The division of the novel into four sections, Dekoiti, Kaliyug, Mano Majra and Karma also suggests that it is the history of the village. And in this manner, the village Mano Majra becomes the protagonist of the novel. Here we have a comparison between the novel and the film. As we have seen, the novel is set in a fictitious village called Mano Majra, situated on the borders of India and Pakistan, the newly born countries. For centuries, the village has been one where diverse communities coexisted peacefully. Each section of the four-section novel is closely connected with the other and predicts the unfolding events in the life of the villagers of Mano Majra against the backdrop of partition. However, the film Train to Pakistan begins with a series of outstanding incidents. Hukum Chand, the commissioner, returns to his village Mano Majra. He narrates the reasons for Jugga, one of the inhabitants of the village, becoming a dacoit. We come to know through his narration that Jugga's father was a dacoit and he was sentenced to death. The child Jugga had witnessed the death sentence of his father. He wants to claim his father's position and wants to become the leader of the dacoits. He is now fighting with his opponent Mali to get his father's place in the group. Hukum Chand informs the audiences of this past. In the film, Jagga is shown at the home of his Muslim beloved Nuran. Mali and his group rob Ramlal and kill him. The police suspect that Jagga is one of the culprits and Iqbal is the other. In the novel, Jagga and Nuran meet in the dark night near the river. But in the film, Jagga gets injured in a scuffle with his opponent Mali, who, after killing Lala Ramlal, while leaving the village, throws bangles in the courtyard of Jagga, asking Jagga to put those bangles on. While Jagga has come to his beloved Nuran, a Muslim woman, to meet her at her home. So in the novel, the meeting is near the river, whereas in the film, the meeting is in Nuran's home. In the novel, the village is the protagonist, whereas in the film, we find Jagga showing his bravery and his hero-like attitude by silently slinking into his beloved's home. In the movie, he is shown as a hero as well as an innocent lover who saves his beloved's life by sacrificing his own. He becomes the hero of the film, while in the novel, the hero is the village 
of Mano Majra. The novelist conveys his narrative through the use of verbal language. The screenwriter conveys his narrative through visual and verbal means. Because film is a visual medium and tells us much more than the novel possibly could about the physical nature of people, places and things, the filmmaker is more limited than the novelist in the images he presents but has much more control over how his audience receives such images. A novel usually takes place inside the character's head. A play deals with the language of dramatic action, while a screenplay deals with externals, with details. Nevertheless, one can say that the film is about the partition of India as well as the story of Chaga's sacrifices and love for Nuran. Thus, the film, unlike the novel, shows Chagga as the protagonist. Sergei Eisenstein, in his famous essay, Dickens, Griffith and the Film Today, makes a distinction or makes a relation between the narrative in a film and the narrative in a novel. According to Eisenstein, films most readily adapt novels with externalities and physical description. But if any fiction has internal monologue or the stream of consciousness, then adaptation becomes difficult. Talking about the work of Dickens, Eisenstein notes his cinematic techniques of narration, including anticipation of such phenomena as frame composition and the close-up. If we apply this theory to Babsi Sidwa's Cracking India or Ice Candy Man and compare it with the film made out of this novel called Earth 1947, then we will begin to note the differences in the narratives. The novel begins with the child narrator, Lenny. Lenny has polio and she is looked after by her beautiful Aya who is known as Nanny in the household. The name of Nanny is actually Shanta. However, the film does not begin with the child Lenny but the young adolescent Lenny's voice which narrates the story. At the outset of the film, we see the kind of expectations that the readers would have of a novel called Cracking India. This movie is ma was made in the 50th year of India's independence and the 50th year of partition. It was made keeping international audiences in mind. In the novel, N Lenny is the narrator of the painful events of partition. She is a Parsi girl and the Parsis were a neutral community at the time of partition. So, they remained directly unaffected. Therefore, it is through her nanny Shanta that Lenny learns about the horrors of partition. The film is a love triangle wherein two Muslim men, the Ice Candy Man, played by Amir Khan, and Hassan, played by Rahul Khanna, fall in love with the nanny Shanta. It is Shanta who has to decide whom she favours. She responds to the advances of Hassan. Parallel with the love triangle in the film runs the partition narrative that gradually engulfs and threatens the life of Shanta. At the end of the film, a Muslim mob comes to Lenny's home and asks her family to hand over all the Hindus living in the house. They also ask for Shanta, saying, that the Hindu ayah should be given to them. Lenny's mother lies to them, saying that they do not know her whereabouts. Now, the ice candy man comes onto the scene. He holds Lenny close, wins her trust, and asks her to tell the truth. Little Lenny tells the truth, and the mob takes away Shanta. Thus, one can see that the ice candy man uses partition as an excuse to assuage his sexual jealousy. 
in the film, dramatic incidents follow one another to show the tumult of the times. Suddenly, Hassan is killed and his body is found in a bag. It is then that the ice candy man comes to Lenny's house to take away Shanta. This shows how the partition became a horrible excuse to fulfill his sexual desires. In the novel, Lenny goes with her godmother to find the nanny Shanta and rescues her from the ice candy man. However, in the film, the focus shifts from the child Lenny to the nanny Shanta and to the horrific incidents of mass killings, abduction and rape that took place at the time of partition. Talking about film adaptation, George Bluestone says, Between the per percept of the visual image and the concept of the mental image lies the root difference between the two media. This echoes the words of Joseph Conrad, who says in the preface to Nigger of the Narcissus, My task, which I am trying to achieve, is, by the powers of the written word, to make you hear, to make you feel. It is, before all, to make you see. This emphasis on seeing is something which will guide us in our understanding of the difference between the literary narrative and the film narrative. In Fiction and the Camera Eye, Alan Spiegel talks about the concretized form of narrative in which a great deal of visual material is available in the written text. Spiegel says that the integrity of the seen object is made palpable and its palpable presence is one which is apart from the presence of the observer. The writers who are able to make the integrity of the seen object palpable presence are, in his view, James Joyce or Gustave Flaubert. Henry James, as an example of what he calls a balanced distribution of emphasis in the rendering of what is looked at, who is looking, and what the looker makes of what she sees. Thus, he shows us how fiction can be transformed into visual material through the concretization of form and through a balanced distribution of emphasis amongst characters. The script of the movie Train to Pakistan was written by Kushwan Singh along with the director of the movie. On the other hand, the movie Earth 1947 was rewritten from the novel by Deepa Mehta herself. In passing, we must mention, especially with respect to Indian films, that an often overlooked aspect of film adaptation is the inclusion of sound and music. In a literary text, a specific sound effect can often be implied or specified by an event. But in the process of adaptation, the filmmakers will have to determine specific sound characteristics which subliminally affect narrative interpretation. In some cases of adaptation, music may have been specified in the original material, but in some cases it is left to the sensitivity of the director. In a book called A Theory of Adaptation, Linda Hutchin talks about three modes of involvement. The telling mode, for example, in literature, the showing mode, for example, in film or theatre, and the interactive mode, for example, video games. While the first two modes immerse the audience in the activity of reading, watching and listening by appealing mostly to their imagination, the interactive model of engagement allows them to participate physically in the adapted texts, to enter the story and act as one of the characters. Nevertheless, one needs to understand that there are different ways of creating a story or plot in a film. Sometimes the idea is original to the director and sometimes she borrows from 
existing literature. John Harrington, in film and as literature, estimated that a third of all films ever made have been made from novels. So adaptation has always been central to filmmaking. Adaptations are like retellings. So the semiotic adaptation and the visual presentation of the same text should be looked at from different perspectives. Sometimes adaptation is like replication and it stands on its own as an independent work, close or far from the source. Moreover, adaptation can be seen as hybrid con construction, mingling with different media, discourses and collaborations. Structuralist and post-structuralist theoretical discussions have subverted the idea of hierarchy between literature and films. So, they have significantly changed the theory and concept of adaptation in a positive way. Critiques of adaptation focus primarily on the impoverishment of the book's content due to necessary omissions in the plot. We have already discussed this from the point of view of fidelity. The perception that problems related to the visuality of the filmic medium also affect adaptation. Each act of visualization narrows down the open-ended characters, objects or landscapes created by the book and reconstructed in the reader's imagination to concrete, definite images. Besides, the verbally transmitted characteristics of heroes, places and the spatial relations between them are open to various decoding possibilities in the process of imagining. But in visualization, it is regarded as destroying many of the subtleties with which the printed word could shape the internal world of a literary work only in the interaction with the reader. Another important aspect of adaptation is that of the interrelationships between the arts. William C. Wees says in poetry films and film poems that, in a certain way, all works of art offer multi-layered modes of communication that break through the virtually established barriers between different media. Each work lays the groundwork for many possible adaptations because each art can play with elements of other arts. So, the response to the critiques of adaptation can be seen as follows. The limitations of the fidelity approach we have already considered. We have shifted rather from fidelity to the original to the less judgmental discourse of intertextuality. We have stressed on how filmmakers move within the field of intertextual connections and employ means of expression available in film arts to convey meanings. Adaptation, therefore, can be seen as original interpretation. Finally, why adapt? The relation between adaptation and pleasure has been considered by Linda Hutchin. She says that pleasure arises out of a combination of the known with the unknown a mixture of repetition with difference, familiarity with novelty. A source of pleasure is the unity of artistic communication across media. We begin to notice that many of the elements of a literary text gain a new life when interpreted in the context of another medium's specificity. Oscillation between different media is of great importance to our perception of the world, for it locates works of art in the energetic field between different modes of communication and beyond the limits of a particular medium. Thus, there is nothing original in a true sense. Everything that we read and see has some element of some other creative work, that is, intertextuality. Hence, every new artistic creation is not the original, but a, an original. All the partition narratives 
share a text of pain and mass killings. Any writer or director, when she makes a movie, does not make anything original, but adds to the existing corpus of work, both literary and cinematic. In other words, the text called Partition of India spawns various narratives, both in literary and visual forms. In this module, we have introduced partition through literary writings and films made on partition narratives. We have concentrated on the theory and the concept of adaptation and how literary writings have become films through this adaptation, taking Train to Pakistan and Cracking India as examples. You are encouraged to look at the films themselves and at the texts so that the distinctions as well as the similarities and the differences in emphasis become clear to you. Thank you.